Ladies and gentlemen, please let's welcome warmly the Children's Bible Hour and Uncle Charlie. Thank you for sharing your evening service with us. It's been about three years, and we've been looking forward to a return ever since we were here the last time. Let me introduce some very important people at the instruments, and we're going to get right into the program. Over here at the drums is Josh Tromp. He was in the choir when he was just a little boy. Paul Storm was never a little boy. Well, it was a long time ago. He was one of those that was on when I was on as a kid. And at the keyboard is our music director, Jan Dudley, who's also behind a lot of the creative stuff that you're going to see tonight. I'm Uncle Charlie. I'll sort of tie the loose ends together. There'll be some other introductions in just a moment. But let me introduce the theme for you tonight. In just a few months, the city of Atlanta is going to host the Summer Olympics, Olympics 96. And athletes from all over the world are going to come and they're going to be going for the gold. Now, as Christians, that's what we're doing. We're going for the gold only in a little bit of a different way. And that's what our theme is all about tonight. And this is our cheerleader. This is five-year-old Rachel. And she is going to get things started by singing a song called Going for the Gold. Do it for us. Don't get me down I'm ready for the 
Thanks, Rachel. Going for the gold. Good way to start the program. Well, now that we've told you what our theme is about, let's get at it. First, let me introduce Children's Bible Hour's Associate Director, Uncle John Elmore. Uncle John, welcome, and I wonder if you would be willing to do something. What's that, Uncle Charlie? I wonder if you'd be willing to pretend to be somebody you really aren't. Who's that? Well, you know, as Christians, we look at going for the gold much differently than the world does. That's right. And uh, I'd sort of like to be the uh, coach of the Christian side and let you... Uh, <clears throat> Take the other side. Uh, we'd like to have you pretend that you're going to represent what the world thinks of the colors that we're going to talk about. How about it? All right, Uncle Charlie, as long as everybody knows that I'm just pretending, I'd be glad to let everybody know what the world thinks of these colors. All right, well, we know that they know that you know the right way, but we'll pretend you don't. All right? All right. Now, we're going to be introducing the colors one at a time. But before we do it one at a time, choir, I want you to get things started following Rachel's Going for the Gold song with a song that ties all of the five colors together in a song called The Color Song. Listen. introductory song that tied them all together, but now let's take them one at a time. Okay, uh, Mr. World, uh, what does this color 
make you think of? Black. Mm -hmm. Black makes me think of my enemy, my opponent, anyone who stands between me and what I want. I must beat them, crush them, step on them, and I am more important to me than anyone else. Whoa. I, I, whoa, I, whoa, and whoa, me, whoa, me, whoa, me. Oh, 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 you are a mean one, all right. Sherilyn, I think you'd better come set this man straight with a good song that talks about uh, this color and what it might represent. And then, after you're done, Mark has something else to add, too. today but it means the same as it did way back in grandma and grandpa's day it starts with an s and it ends with an n with an i in between the two and though i hate to say it i must confess to you i is me i is me i is me i is me there's a little bitty i in the middle of sin and the i in the middle is me i is me i is me so bad and everybody else is worse but god expects perfection and he won't grade on the curve any disgrace he can erase if we confess we've sinned and though it may sound simple here's one way to be Thanks, Mark. Well, it's certainly we realize we've got a problem and we need to do something about it. And of course, as Christians, we believe this color can tell us something that can be done. But I'd be very interested to know what you think of this color. Red. Mm -hmm. Red means I'm a red-blooded American and I can do it on my own. I work hard, I try hard. In fact, I work so hard, I get red in the face. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'll show you, I'll show you. Oh, all right. 
Yes, sir. To do it, I must do it myself and depend on my own efforts. Well, I'll tell you, um, I'm sorry to say that you're uh, wrong, but I beg your pardon? What's your problem? Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> Okay, so much for doing it on your own. Uh huh. Well, we believe that this color of red stands for what's at the very heart of the gospel, something that I know this church believes in, and that's the shed blood of Jesus Christ. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And this is the only, only antidote for sin. And Gabe and Melissa are going to come to tell us more about it in their medley of songs. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other found I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. The blood that Jesus shed for me way back on Calvary. The blood that gives me strength from day to day. It will never lose its power. It reaches to the highest mountains. It flows to the lowest valley. For the cleansing power, are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless, are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Oh, oh, precious is the flow.
choir. We think this message of the blood is so very important. We need one more song, and we want three of our younger singers to come. Loralee, you come on right up here. Yeah, okay, all right. Yeah, no, you don't need those this time. No, come on up here. And this is Stephanie, and this is Nadia. All right, where's the other mic? Uncle John, Uncle John, we need that other mic. Okay, oh, we got it all together now, huh? All right. Now do we have it all together? All right, good. This is Loralee. Stay in the same place, I'll forget. This is Stephanie, and this is Nadia. Now, on the second song, they want you to help, and everybody's going to do it. You're just pretend you're a kid. When they tell you to do something, you better do it. All right? Sing it for us. Washed in the blood, washed in the blood, he died for my sins, he died for my sins. Because of what Jesus did for me, my sins are forgiven. Well, we come to our next color, and um, I can hardly wait to see what you think about this color. Can't you tell from my face? Oh, I thought it always looked that way. Oh, I'm so blue. I want to win. Winning is everything. After all my work and efforts and everything, if I don't win, I'm really disappointed. I'm just blue about mm, it. Well, I have a little different idea about this color. Have you ever heard the term blue blood? Hmm. It refers to royalty. And when we've been washed by the blood of the Lamb, we are children of the King of Kings. We are royalty, right? And our trio, Christy, Tammy, and Katie, are going to come to sing about the fact that we are children of the king. Ladies, do it for us. We are the children of the king. We want to laugh and we want to sing. We want to share the joyful news that Jesus Christ is calling you. We are the children of the King. We want to laugh and we want to sing. We want to share the joyful news that Jesus Christ is calling you. Jesus Christ is calling you. We are his own. He has bought us with a price. His precious blood. And he's called us to his life. We are the 
thing of working with a group like this is that those three are all graduating later this year. You know, they just get to sounding so good, but that <coughs> makes room for some of the younger ones. Thank you, Trio. And that's a good reminder that as children of the King, we are joyful. But now the choir has a cute song that's going to tell us uh, something else about this color blue. Blueness is newness. Listen. is newness. Yes, as children of the king, we are full of joy. But now, wait a minute. As children of the king, we have a job to do. This world needs our influence. Rachel, why don't you come and get us ready for the next color by telling us that as Christians, we really need to make a difference. And I want to challenge every one of you that are listening right now, that are watching this video, that are here in the auditorium, are you making a difference in your world with your neighbors, with those around about you? Rachel, tell us more about it, all right? Our God commands us to be different, not just a copy of the world.
Hey, Rachel, stay there a minute. You know, she has biblical grounds for what she just sang about. Give us that scripture from Romans 12. Can you do that? Romans 12, 2. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed. All right. And that is good advice, isn't it? Well, Uncle John, with what you've had to say about the other colors, I can hardly wait to hear what you think this color means. Well, you know, Uncle Charlie, if the people out there are thinking greenbacks, mm -hmm. loot, money, cashola, they'd be absolutely right. Green is where it's at, baby. I want to tell you. Mm -hmm. When I win, I'm going to make lots and lots and lots of money because everyone will want me to endorse their product. Mm. TV commercials, movies, appearances, and all my opponents that I beat will be green with envy because I'll be the one earning all the money, money, money. Oh, sir, I'm sorry to disillusion you again, but you are wrong uh, again. I am? Yes. For Christians, Green means growing. Oh. We don't just sit and soak and sour. We grow in the Lord. And we've got some songs that are going to talk about that. Let's see. First of all, Mark, you're going to come. And then immediately after that, we've got something else. All right? Let's hear it. Lord, my heart can grow so far. is to worship you alone. Open up my soul to worship and adore, to be a fragrance offered to your throne. us toward the one who gives us the power to grow. Now the girls, Christy, Cammy, and, Tammy and Katie, are going to tell us where we get our food from. It's from the Word of God. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto
Thank you, ladies. Word of God is our source of strength and power. And we've got another song about this. In fact, we want to uh, introduce a very distinguished uh, professor that is here with us tonight. This is Professor Novin. And he's going to teach a class tonight on uh, uh, proper eating habits and how we ought to make sure that we get the right food. Choir, have a little fun with this one, all right? It's called The Basic Four. Listen. And grains and meat and cheese, every little kid learns these four basic food groups. But when you're growing in the Lord, you will need another for to help you grow strong. Remember this song. Read your Bible, always pray, tell of Jesus, love each day. Spend some time with Christian friends, and you're gonna grow, gonna grow in Him. That's four. That's four. Basic four. One, two, three, four. You need to know. Basic four. You want to grow. That's right. Friends, and you're gonna grow, gonna grow in him. That's four. That's four. The basic four. One, two, three, four. You need to know. The basic four. You want to grow. Oh, that's four. That's four. The basic four. One, two, three, four. Just do it. Stick to it. And grow. One. Read your Bible. Two. Always pray. Three. Tell of Jesus. Love each day. Four. Spend some time with Christian friends. And you're gonna grow, gonna grow, gonna grow. Job, All right. Well, I, I guess they took me literally when I said have some fun with that. Well, we're down to the last color. This one right here, the gold. Now, uh, wait a minute. Gold usually refers to money. You've already covered that one. What could this cover color possibly mean to you, Mr. World? Well, Uncle Charlie, this is what it all comes down to, What's right? That? Well, we're going for the gold. Mm -hmm. That can only mean one mm -hmm. thing. What's that? The gold medal. Oh. I want the gold medal after working so hard. That's all I want. No silver, no bronze for me. I'll only settle for the gold. Yeah, but now wait a minute. After a while, they're going to tarnish. They're going to certainly gather dust. No, sorry, wrong again. Oh. As Christians, we're going for the gold in much different way. We're going for the crown of life that Jesus Christ, our Savior, will give us. Us, and to those who have trusted him as Savior and are doing his will. We're headed for heaven, and that's what the gold also reminds us of. And you know what? Heaven isn't just for uh, old people like me. It is also for kids, right? Let me put that microphone up a little bit for you, Laurely, because you've got a cute song that tells us heaven is for kids. Listen. <laughs> Woolly lambs and big fat fuzzy bears, roly poly elephants leaping with the hares, monkeys climbing tall giraffes and tickling their ribs. <laughs> heaven is a happy place and heaven is for kids. 
Thank you, Laura Lee. I think. Heaven is for kids. Well, that was a fun song. Now we're going to hear a song that's a little more serious, but it's going to tell about something that's more precious than gold when you lead a person to Jesus Christ. Listen. More precious than gold, much better than silver, is the price of a soul God wants to deliver. There are people around you crying out for a Savior, and their lives are a treasure of worth beyond measure. More precious than gold. People around me are grasping treasures that leave them so empty. Each day I see them hurried and hopeless, rushing down the path to eternity. More precious than gold. More precious than gold. Much better than silver. Precious than gold, more precious than gold, more precious than gold, much better than silver, much better than silver. It's the price of a soul, the price of a soul. God wants to deliver. There are people around you crying out for a savior, and their lives. Treasure of worth beyond measure, more precious than gold. And their lives are a treasure of worth beyond measure, more precious than gold. Amen. More precious than gold. One out, Sherilyn. Your song really wraps it all up because it tells us what we're really going for as we run the race. And it is to hear from our Lord and Savior. Well done, good and faithful servant. We're looking forward to the victor's crown. Runners all stand ready, the crowd is looking on. The starting gun has sounded, and the race has now begun. Beginning seems so easy, but soon I feel the pain. Then I hear a voice from heaven above, and it's calling out my name. Be faithful, Christian, and run the race. My eyes on Jesus, he knows which path is right. I trust his word to lead me through the day and through the night. Whenever I'm discouraged, he runs along beside. When I fall, my Savior picks me up and he keeps my hope alive. Be faithful, Christian, and run the race.
we've got a great story. We've been talking about running the race and keeping our eyes on the goal, and that is what our story is all about. It's called Eyes on the Prize. Faster! Run faster! You can do it! Keep your eye on the goal! You can be a winner! What are you doing, Luke? Who are you talking to? What? What'd you say? I can't hear you! Now can you hear me? I don't have to yell! So what do you want? Mom says you need to come in for breakfast. She's kind of mad at you for not doing your chores. You didn't even make your bed. Oh, I'm too busy for that stuff. I've been training. Training? Training for what? For the big race. What big race? Oh, Allison, where have you been? I joined the track team at school, and we've got a big meet coming up against the toughest team in our league. Coach gave me a training tape to help me get ready. I'm going to be the fastest runner our middle school's ever seen. I'll be so fast that, that well, uh, someday I might even be in the Olympics. Yeah, right. If you live that long, Mom said she wants you right away. So you better get in the house or you're dead meat. I'm coming, I'm coming. What do you know about dedication and perseverance anyway? There you go, champ. You were really hungry, weren't you? Oh, I know it. Luke hasn't even taken the time to feed his dog or play with him. He's so obsessed with his training for his race on Saturday. Luke disappointed his best friend, Jeff, too. Jeff went in the hospital for surgery, and Luke promised him he'd visit him. He needs to rethink what his priorities are. Let's talk to him about it. Here come the kids now. Hi, Allison. Luke. Did you kids get washed up for breakfast? We cleaned up, Dad, but Luke still stinks. He smells like a dirty locker room. I may be all sweaty, but I'm in great shape. I'm going to join the Olympic team someday and get rich and famous doing commercials for breakfast cereals. In your dreams. Someday you may be rich and famous, but like it or not, today you're just plain old Luke Whitley, and Luke Whitley has other chores to do around here besides posing for commercials. Oh, Dad, what a way to crush a guy's ego. But Luke... Ever since you joined the track team, you've neglected everything else. You forgot to feed and water Champ. And you even forgot to visit Jeff in the hospital. Oh, no. I never gave it another thought. Yeah, you've forgotten a lot of things lately. Getting ready for the track meet is about the only thing you have remembered. But you don't understand. If I'm going to be the best, I've got to practice and train and exercise. Oh, but I think we do understand, Luke. Your father and I agreed you could only go out for the track team if you didn't neglect your responsibilities here at home. That's right, Luke. See, you're not just a valuable member of the track team. You're an important part of our family team, too. For us to be a winning team, we all have to pitch in and work together, and that includes you, son. And, as believers in Jesus Christ, we're on God's team, too. We have a good reason for training hard to do our very best, better than just getting rich and famous. We do it to lift up the name of Jesus, not just to make ourselves look good. Okay, okay. Mom, Dad, I promise... After the track meet on Saturday, I'll make it up to everybody. But right now, I've got to train hard to be ready. The other guys are counting on me. I'm the anchor for the relay race, so it's all up to me to make sure that we win. Just remember, Luke, there are more important things in life than winning that race on Saturday. Well, I can't think of any right now. I'll remind you then. How about your relationship with God and your family and friends, schoolwork, music lessons, taking care of champ? The Bible says that physical training is of some value, Luke. But we must build up endurance and perseverance in our spiritual lives, too. Yeah, Mom. I know. Those other 
look pretty tough. Runners, to your mark. Remember, in a relay race, all the runners have to work together as a team if they hope to win. And passing the baton is the most important part of the race. Mess that up and the whole team effort is hurt. Well, whatever happens, I'm sure Luke will learn some lessons from this. I've been praying that all along. Set. They're about to start. such a finish. You did it. Thanks, coach. I look back. I almost blew it for the whole team. Yeah, but you got back in the race. You didn't quit. No, I didn't quit. Even when I almost dropped the baton, I knew the whole team was counting on me to finish the race. And you did, Luke. You won. But I didn't do it alone. If the other guys on the team hadn't given me such a lead, I could never have made up for my mistake. Yes, every team member is important, Luke. But you put your eyes back on the goal and gave it all you had. I've never seen anybody run like that. Mark my words, boy. Keep working hard and you're going to go places. Yeah, maybe, Coach. But for right now, I think I've got more training to do in some areas I've been overlooking. I need to straighten out my priorities. Whatever you say, son. If it makes you a better runner, I'm all for it. Oh, it will, Coach. It will. Great kid you have there, Mr. Whitley. He's going to be a great runner someday. Thanks, Coach. Luke, that was a great yeah, finish. Yeah, I can't believe you really won. It was so close. Yeah, Luke. I hate to say it, but you were super. Maybe I will see your face on my cereal box someday. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> What's wrong, son? You won! Isn't that what you wanted? I thought so. It's what you worked so hard to accomplish, Luke. Yeah, I know. But... But what? I thought you'd be excited or signing autographs or posing for pictures or something. <laughs> yeah, right. What is it, Luke? I almost dropped the baton because I didn't follow the coach's instructions. But you didn't drop it. And then I had to run harder than I ever had before to try and make up for it. And the whole time I was running, I kept thinking about that verse in Hebrews. You know, uh, Hebrews 12.1? I know that one. Let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles us, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Yeah, that's it. That's what I decided to do. And Hebrews 12.2 says, Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. That's the goal you've been telling me to keep my eyes on, isn't it? You got it, Luke. And you know what? It was like the Holy Spirit was reminding me that I have a different race to run, a spiritual race. And it's not for a trophy like this one. It's much more important than that. Yes, it is, son. Living for the Lord Jesus Christ is a race, and bringing glory to God is our goal. And telling others about Christ's death, burial, and resurrection is like carrying that baton. We pass it along from one person to another. It's like a race that goes on and on and on. Yeah, and if we stumble, we don't give up or quit. 
We get back up. We put our eyes back on the goal and run hard. We're in this race together. We're part of God's team. And we've got the greatest coach ever. If we follow his instructions, we can't lose. He always builds winners. Yeah, I really do feel like a winner now. Well, then let's go celebrate. Come on, team. We're out of here. take just a moment to introduce those who've been working so hard behind the scenes. Carrie, the lone girl back there, come on out. And Mark, and Navin, Brennan, and Nate. Let's give our puppeteers a hand. All right. Now, clear it off as quickly as you can, and we'll move on to our final song because we have something very important we want to share with everyone who is here tonight. Do you know something? It isn't just the pastors in this world that are running the race. It isn't just the other Christian ministries that are running the race. You know who's running the race? Every one of us who name the name of Jesus Christ. We have a part in that race. And you can just sit on the sideline and be a spectator if you want to be, but I want to run the race and hear from my Savior, well done, good and faithful servant. But now, there may be some of you here, you've never entered the race because you've never trusted Christ as Savior. And oh, it would be our prayer that you'd go back to that color red that we talked about and realize that you can't do it in your own strength. You can't do it by yourself. The only way you can do it is through the shed blood of Jesus Christ and trusting him as Savior. And we would ask that you would pray tonight to receive Christ if you've never done it, and then join the race. Hebrews 12, 1 and 2 gives us a beautiful picture of what the race is all about and the goal that we're going for as we press towards that mark. As we, You know what I can really see right now? It is as if heaven is open and there are people there who are watching us as we're running the race. They're kind of looking over the clouds and saying, all right, yeah, go to it. Good job. And they're applauding us because you know what? Heaven is counting on you and me to do the job. 